our nation is sort of looking at us as, as we talk about global climate change and sea level rise and what's going on down here. Um, why, why do we want to help the other people in the nation understand that we need to do this? I mean, how, or maybe how do we help the other people? Well, it's, it's critical that people around the nation understand our situation because we're going to depend on people from around the nation to help us pay for this. Uh, uh, Louisiana can't afford this alone. Louisiana didn't get in this shape alone. Uh, sure, there's things that we did that we could have done better. Uh, we could have uh, explored for oil and gas in a more environmentally compatible way. Uh, but you can point to things that people did all over the country that were not in accordance with the safe environmental practices. I think, uh, I think it is critical that the rest of the United States understand our situation. And I don't think they do understand our situation. Uh, I'm, I'm constantly talking to people uh, you know, everybody talks to people from around the country, and uh, it's very, very uh, apparent that uh, they do not understand what our issues are and uh, our problems. You know, I hear all the time that uh, we shouldn't live where we live. Uh, we should move because we're sinking. Well, the truth is we've been sinking for 10,000 years. Uh, it's just in later years when we were forced to build levees uh, that the sinking has overtaken, overcome the, uh, the land building. So all we left now is with the sinking. Uh, you know, it's important to know that we can restore us. I, I'm very frustrated at times about the uh, differences in opinions that get out to the rest of the nation. Um, you know, the rest of the nation, you know, believes that, uh, well, they know that the Mississippi River built us uh, and it laid down all these marshes. Uh, and so that they, they're easily swayed into believing that, uh, that diversions are going to save us. Uh, you know, but it's a different river. Uh, we, the river doesn't have the sediments it had when it built us. Uh, we, we cannot rely on massive water diversions to build us back. There's people living here. These massive diversions would more than likely, most probably, flood people. We cannot flood people, flood our communities in the name of restoration. Who, you, who are you restoring it for, if not for the people? Uh, you can't run the people out in, in the name of restoration. Uh, you have to find a compatible way to restore it. And we can restore it. This is entirely doable over years uh, with harvesting sediment from the bottom. And we are experiencing global sea level rise. If, if the sea level is rising, the one thing we're going to need is sediments. We have to keep that elevation, build up that elevation. I'm not talking about dredging from the river of uh, Mississippi and Atchafalaya, you know, one or two times a year. I'm talking about a continuous program of uh, harvesting sediments and constructing wetlands uh, with those sediments. Uh, and I'm, t I'm talking about a continuous project. This is, this is what we're going to have to do if South Louisiana is going to survive. And it's cheaper to do it, to restore it, than it is to move everybody out. It's cheaper to, to build us back. Um, I think you've given us a lot to think about today. Before we get to the very end of the interview, um, 
You've picked a very interesting place for us to be. Tell me why you picked Lake Verrett for your interview today. Well, I've, I've done a lot of work in Lake Verrett, and uh, I think it's beautiful. I think uh, when people think of South Louisiana, they think of this terrain. Uh, they think of cypress trees um, with moss draping from it. Um, in 1974, when I started working, I think Lake Verrett's the first place I came to. Um, so it has a special meaning. Uh, it's the place I think of when I think of Southeast Louisiana. Um, I want to thank you today for taking time out of your very busy schedule to let people know why coastal Louisiana is so important, not just to you, but all the people that you represent. Um, and I am honored that you would give me this time and share this with our, our viewers. Is there anything that you want to tell them before we come to the end of our interview? Is there something that I might have missed that you'd want to tell them? I think you've done a great job, Susan. And uh, I just want people to know that uh, don't lose hope. There is a way to restore this. And, uh, you know, St. Pay isn't going to do this alone. Uh, the Estuary program is not a by-yourself type of program. It's uh, it's everybody. We, we need the support of the people. Um, if, if pipeline sediment transport is going to be successful, it's going to be successful because everybody wants it and everybody's making their voice known and you know, saying that we need to restore Louisiana by piping sediment. So, so you know, I, I invite the public to uh, join in the estuary program, uh, in the estuary program's voice asking for the transport of sediments because that's the way that's the future of southeast louisiana thank you i appreciate everything you shared with us carrie thank you